Hey guys, welcome to my first web application project created in Python and Django. A couple of months back, I had made a video on a hotel reservation system. This was made entirely in Python. In that video, I had just one folder called the source folder SRC, which contained all the scripts and all the classes there. And this project is an extension to that project. Here I have Django files as well as some HTML files. So to break it down in simple terms, a web application consists of a front end and a back end. The back end is where the server does all the interactions and the front end is what you see on the internet. So web applications are very important and they are used in almost every engineering profession nowadays, especially that which uses a lot of data and uses interacts with customers around the world. So here I have the, the Django files there and to create a Django project, it's in fact very simple. The template is generated automatically for you. I have a link in the description below which explains in detail step by step how to actually set up this kind of architecture to set up all these folders, assign a project name, and what each file does and how they interact with the front end and the back end. So I'd please recommend you watch that video because it's very important to know how this works or at least have a good understanding of it. Based on that video, I was able to create an extension to this and actually build this web application. So thank you to Suvik Paul, who stays in India, who created that Medium blog. And I was able to use this information very well because he explains it extremely well. So, yep. Now we have this project here. As you can see, my project name is Hotel Reservation. I have a bunch of folders there. Migration Source Public, which contains all the HTML files. Then I have this manage.py which is generated by Python automatically. So now let's move on to the code and let's see how this project is set up. So I have VS Code as my editor here. I use VS Code now for Python projects. So we have this folder architecture there. So manage.py just contains all the background information to interact. And I have my public folder have HTML files in there. I'm not going to go into too much of details about HTML and how they work. The main point of this video is to show you how the front end interacts with the back end. So my front end files are, are all there. So this one is called add customer. So first name, last name, and so on. Hotel status. I just have variables which are passed in. Init reservation. This is my first page. Define hotel at standard rooms and the form takes you to add customer by using form action. Make reservation lets you make a reservation, check-in date, check-on date, routes, selection, and then print the details of the reservation. So in this project, I don't have a back buttons and, you know, form re reloads. That's more complicated, but this video was just to show you how you can get a front end to interact with the back end. So the back end files, they go into a source folder there, as you can see. So all these files here, they are my, were from my previous video. I also have this views.py file. Now the backend is imported into here. Views is what the user can see and is where you add all the functions. So one possible way to import the backend is by doing from.source.reservation import reservation. Because I have my main class in here, reservation interacts with hotel which interacts with customer. So I'm, interact, I'm importing this one here, reservation. That is the main class, right? So that is the only one that you need because it contains all of the instances under it. So let's get back to views.py and I'm using class-based views. If you look at Python projects in Django, many of them just use functions, but I need a class because I need to pass in values between every function. So the best way to do it is to defining self class variables attributes, which I can use to pass back and forth. So to begin with, I have my index. This is what starts it all. I have dot customer add function that interacts with the back end there. This is my front end function here. So the best way to show this is to just do a demonstration, but let me go over some of the other files. So in urls.py, I have this path include hotel because that's the folder name dot urls. Let's go into urls inside this folder here. And this is where you define your links. So the URLs go into there. And once again, the blog, which I'll post in the description below, has everything in it. It also talks about what this, how to set this up correctly. So you have to set this up as per your 
individual views files. So in this case, I have a bunch of functions here that make a reservation, add a customer and print the details. Many of these files are empty. As you can see, I didn't change anything because I don't need to only work with the files that you need. So let me minimize the source folder here. Let me open migrations in a .py. You know, this is untouched cache files. Let's so ignore that one apps. Yeah. So most of it is all the same. I just changed this to hotel because that's my folder name there. So you can see how it works now. So let me run this and see what we get. So python manage.py run server. Now it'll say starting development server and you click it, this one here, control click this one here. It'll open on my local host. So this should open up my UI, you can see. So let me define one room, one standard, one deluxe, one executive, and five days as the booking day. So we have initialized here, one S, one D, one E, standard deluxe executive. This is my date range there. So you can see this comes from my init reservation function, which takes me to add customer. So if we go back in the code here, let's look at the HTML files. So, so this one was done. It took me here. So you can see first name, last name, and the variables are passed in. And these come from the views file. So views interacts with all these HTML files here. So inside views, let's see what we have. We have customer add. So when I did the init reservation, I, I assigned the fields to variables, NS rooms, ND rooms, and these get read by the customer add function. Okay, so the second I press post or submit, in this case I have submit, it goes here to customer add because why? It's cause I have add customer in the form action. So this takes me straight there. And customer add can be seen here. So add customer mv.customer add. So this is the URL patterns. This is imported from my view and my view is right there. So I'm using class based views once again. So keep this in mind. So yeah, customer add reads the rooms. It initializes the hotel and it was successful. So it's correct. And then it just said, it then loaded the fields to add the customer. So this goes here, add customer HTML, and it just scanned everything and then it just put it there. So now let's go to add customer. And this one points to make reservation. Make reservation is here. Make reservation, MV dot reservation make. And I have imported views once again like this. So let's see that one. Let's go here. So we have all this here. So now let's fill in the details of the customer. So I'm just going to put I'll put a fake number there and then I have no guest. So if I press submit, you can see how it made a customer ID because what I'm doing is I'm adding customer here, add customer and get the ID from that class. So then I have make reservation.html, which is the page we are on now. So let's do a check-in date. Let's do 2022. The checkout date can be maybe a couple of days after 2022.04. 04-20 and then we have room selection so let's do this as 1e so we're done it charged 300 bucks for the executive room that's your in date that's your out date your name and then your id so that's print details essentially what's happening is that it goes to print details as my last function and then it just like reads the date in date out it makes a reservation and it checks if the booking flag is correct charge the customer and then pass that to the form so i'm passing all the variables in like this and then we have print details here that prints out the bill so for this video that is it once again i don't have the advanced stuff like modify the reservation cancel it back buttons 
because that's more complex. Now I want to show you how you can connect a back end to a front end in a very simple way in this views file. And second of all, I do want to get into web application design in the future. I want to kind of do combine engineering software like navigation, guidance control, even stuff like algorithms, the data structures in the future and combine that with web application because I feel that that is a very interesting field. So this video was like an intro to it and I'll be doing more of these videos in the future. And with that being said, I do recommend once again that please check out the link below that describes everything connecting Django files with HTML and it's done in a project way so you can understand by an example. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.